The airtight drywall approach refers to a method of creating a continuous air barrier using drywall, sealants, and adhesives. This approach is used to improve energy efficiency, indoor air quality, and general building performance. However, it can be very difficult to ensure that the drywall remains airtight, and if it's improperly air sealed, it can lead to issues such as mold, moisture problems, poor indoor air quality, and durability issues. Air leakage can easily result in condensation, as air transports moisture at shockingly high rates when there is a large difference in temperature between the interior conditioned space and the exterior environment. We've talked about this at length before in another video called Air Barriers versus Vapor Barriers, which you should go and watch up here if you haven't already. In this video, we're talking about the problems with the airtight drywall approach. Let's get into it. It's no secret that clients love to poke holes in the drywall, whether they're nailing picture frames or mounting TVs or running wiring or conduit for new lighting fixtures. And so the fact is that clients have to be educated about the importance of not poking holes in the exterior walls or ceilings if the airtight drywall approach is used. And with that said, the trades and finished carpenters also have to be educated or at least briefed on the importance of properly sealing holes that they make in the drywall. Another thing that has to be considered is that if the client sells the home and doesn't inform the buyer about not poking holes in the exterior walls and ceilings, they're probably going to see issues at some point, especially if the home is located in a colder climate or a hot, humid climate. And if those buyers start to notice moldy and musty smells a year or two after they move in, you can bet that they're going to come after the seller or the builder or contractor with a lawsuit, even if it's not their fault. So education for all the parties involved is critical if you're using this airtight drywall approach. A big issue with the airtight drywall approach is that it inherently moves the air barrier to the interior side. Now, this can work in colder climates to prevent condensation since we're getting a lot of warm, moist air trying to make its way to the exterior. But in warmer climates, and especially humid climates, an interior air barrier is virtually ineffective since we're not stopping that warm, moisture-laden air from finding a path into the wall assembly. And if we're air conditioning in that space, we'll get condensation on the backside of the drywall or interior finishes and mold growth. So in these climates, we really want to make sure that the air barriers located on the exterior, preferably the weather-resistive barrier installed on the sheathing. So the airtight drywall approach can't be used in warm, humid climates or climates that have warm and humid summers with air conditioning. The next problem with the airtight drywall approach is that gypsum board is brittle and can crack relatively easily with building movement. It's completely normal for buildings and components to move with changes in temperature, relative humidity, and moisture content, as well as other more substantial building movement like uniform settlement and differential settlement of the soils but that can usually be avoided pretty easily with proper planning. Things like truss uplift caused by the differences in moisture content between the top cords and the bottom cords can cause the drywall at the ceiling to crack, and if that paper facer fails or delaminates, we can get an air leak. Now, this problem can be mitigated with some smart building techniques. For example, installing the ceiling drywall on strapping that's installed perpendicular to the trusses or the ceiling joists and floating the corners, but this problem can be avoided completely by using something like an airtight membrane instead. Remodeling a home that utilizes drywall as the primary air barrier can pose some serious issues, and this somewhat ties back to what we talked about earlier with regard to poking holes in the drywall. Larger remodels like additions and even smaller simple kitchen renovations that involve exterior walls or ceilings have a massive impact on the integrity of the air barrier, especially with the installation of new fixtures and appliances, running new plumbing and electrical penetrations, and maintaining air barrier continuity between the new and existing conditions. And quite frankly, this is something that more architects and interior your designers need to be aware of, as well as the do-it-yourselfers. Your aesthetic design decisions have a big impact on how the building functions from a moisture control perspective, and if you don't communicate the importance of air sealing these new penetrations or transitions in the air barrier correctly, this will almost certainly cause moisture problems later on, and just telling the contractor or the trades to cock everything isn't the answer. You need a systemic and strategic approach when addressing remodels that utilize drywall as the air barrier, and oftentimes this means providing a new and separate air barrier. Finally, the last problem is workmanship. The airtight drywall approach requires the use of unbroken beads of sealant, adhesives, and gaskets, as well as other components and strategies to ensure that the drywall remains airtight for years, and this can be a lot to ask from the trades, especially if they're not familiar with it. Interior bearing walls that intersect the ceiling plane also have to be meticulously air sealed, as well as partition wall intersections with exterior walls, which can add to the cost of labor. 
The biggest reason that I hear for using the airtight drywall approach is that apparently it's more affordable, but the fact is that you're going to need to hire specialized labor who are familiar with these high performance air sealing details or train the crew in these details to accomplish them successfully, whereas something like a taped or adhered membrane or a zip system is much more intuitive and repeatable. I hope this clears up why I don't recommend using drywall as the primary air barrier. It's risky and we have better options in this day and age. Just because it's possible doesn't mean you should do it. For more information on air barriers and building science, head over to asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. And make sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more weekly building science content. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.